everybody, I'm Riley Bear, CEO of Socks for Souls, and I'm here today with LaShira Nolan. And we are here to talk a little bit about something that LaShira has been up to, or went through, I guess mm -hmm. better said. So let's just hear a little bit about what that was. Okay, cool. So um, once again, my name is LaShira Nolan. Um, I'm a student at Loyola Marymount University. And um, I took a class called Health and Wellness in Homeless Communities as a part of my major. I'm a health and human science major. Mm -hmm. And what that class consisted of is basically uh, basically studying the ecology of homelessness and how there's a, there's a medical and a social aspect aspect to the issue of homelessness mm -hmm. and for the lab portion of that class we actually had to live homelessly uh, during one of our spring breaks at LMU so that was um, four days and three nights living homelessly in Los Angeles. So how did, how did the program work, I guess? So what, where did you sleep? What did you do? What was the days consisted of? Okay, um, so the first night uh, we met up at the LMU Chapel and they surprised us and said, well, you're gonna be staying on campus tonight. But we had to give them our one cards, which, give, which gives us access to our dorms, food and things like that. And we had to find places on campus to stay where um, the campus security couldn't find us, where sprinklers wouldn't be going off and things like that. Um, so it kind of just changed the way that that we viewed our home at LMU because um, it showed us how much of a privilege it is to have a card that gives you access to a home. Mm -hmm. it, it just really changed the way that I viewed my school because it wasn't just where I go and live and things like that. It was like, I'm really fighting for shelter and I have to be smart about where I choose to stay. Right. So then that was the first day. Then the second day consisted of us basically finding food. People kind of always ask the question, you know, what, does, what do homeless people do during the day? Right. Well, it's like you have to, you know, really rush to find places to shop you have to find places where you're going to eat and get a good place in line because some people run out of food. Even the food that we served, that, that we got served, it was um, a lot of moldy bread. Uh, we got a lot of iceberg lettuce, um, which is good because it's considered a vegetable, but it has a lot of water in it. So you're not getting a lot of iron and things like that that you would get in like a, a romaine lettuce or spinach or something like that. Um, so it was, it was interesting to see that. A lot of pasta is what we ate as well because it's easy to cook in large numbers. We were just like, wow, this is crazy because we're used to eating In-N-Out and Chick-fil-A and all that good stuff and it's just like it just kind of warped our perspective because we often think okay well we have extra food let's just give it to the homeless community but it's like they're people too so they also deserve to have healthy food and another interesting part of the class is we were each given a different um, health disorder so me personally I had hypertension so basically all the food that I was eating throughout this retreat I had to be conscious of okay is this good for my hypertension is this too salty so where did you sleep the second, third, and fourth night? Okay, so uh, the second night we slept at uh, Loyola Law School's campus. Uh, I, I personally actually slept on the ground that night and that was tough because the whole time all we had were uh, backpacks and we didn't have a pillow because that would be too much to carry and we had a survival blanket. And then um, the third night we actually slept at a homeless shelter. So. Besides it being a requirement in your program, mm -hmm. did you, was there any like part of you that really wanted to do it and kind of see what it was like and like was there anything that kind of like sparked your interest about this? And I thought that that was so cool that I could literally take a class on homelessness because I feel like it's such a prevalent issue in Los Angeles. It's, so, it's such a complex issue. There's so many things that can cause homelessness and I feel like that's really what I wanted to learn. And also, um, I was once serving at the Midnight Mission in Los Angeles and I was doing a um, like community service and like, you know, just serving sodas as a part of the lunch. And I remember looking up and seeing my uncle and he was just like, hey, Shira. And I was like, hey, you know, what are you doing here? We had a little conversation and that's when it really hit home for me to see my own family member, me serving them at this homeless shelter because it could be someone you know, it could even be yourself and homelessness can affect you that quickly. Or a lot of the people that, you know, I met on this retreat they would say I never thought it would be me you know I'm trying to get a job but no one will hire me and it's like a lot of people have this con this um, this conception that you know the homeless they just won't go get a job but they want to work they want to get a job and support themselves but they just don't necessarily have the opportunity to do that now that you've had an insight and kind of like shared a mind with a homeless person what is the hardest thing I think the hardest thing for me was realizing how much privilege I had. 
So it's like you, you see people who are, you know, the most marginalized of our society. Then you go back to your room with clean sheets and multiple pairs of shoes and all those types of things. So it's like you just think, what did I do to deserve this? And the way that I've come to think about it is, like, for instance, I want to become a physician. And physicians are among, you know, the most high paid in our society. However, I feel a lot of us don't decide to go and serve the marginalized of our society. So I feel like if I'm going to have this privilege of having nice clothes and things like that, the only way that I can justify it is in my mind is if I was put on this earth to serve those who don't have that privilege. Mental illness is a big issue in the homeless community. Right. And I think that even after having those four days of that experience, I kind of started to question what I was thinking and stuff like that through, throughout the experience, because I didn't have any quiet. You know, it was just always loud all the time, and I was always around people, and you start to just get irritated after a while. So, I mean, when, when you're walking down the street and you see a homeless person, and you just want to give them the, the burger that you just had, you know, from a place, and they don't accept it, and they get mad at you, you can't just assume, like, oh, well, they're being ungrateful. Well, maybe they're just having a bad day because they haven't had privacy for the last two months. Within those four days, were you able to take a shower? No, we were not able to take a shower. The closest thing we got to a shower were bird baths, which is kind of like a quick wash up in the public restroom. So I did not shower. And I, when, I, when I finally did shower, like it almost burnt my skin because I wasn't used to, you know, having warm water on my skin. So, so if you were homeless for longer than four days, obviously, mm -hmm. if you didn't have clean underwear or clean socks, how do you think that that would affect you? Um, I feel like it would affect me in a couple of ways. Uh, the first thing I could think of is the social aspects of like the barrier they would create. I wouldn't want to interact with people as much uh, because I wouldn't feel confident in how I smell and things like that. I wouldn't want to, you know, talk to anyone because I wouldn't want to be judged as being like the stinky person or whatever. Um, and then I think that it would affect me medically because then there's a lot of bacteria and stuff like that that can start to flow and infections that can come about and stuff like that. So I think that there's like a social and a medical aspect to it and overall it will have a big effect on me. So thank you for tuning in to Socks for Souls. We will be back next month, second Wednesday, with a new video and thank you to Lashira. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. And um, yeah. Bye! Okay, <laughs> this is a test. <laughs> hey.